Welcome back, horror fans. This month, Chris and I thought we'd talk to you a bit about what we've been watching lately. We tend to talk about older films, and we've finally been watching some newer ones. Well, not finally, but we we're actually talking about it, <laughs> which is nice. Talk, talking about it, yes. Yeah. Talking about movies. Um, so I, the, of the two of us, Chris has just seen a movie that's actually properly out in theaters. So we're going to start with you, Chris. What did you just go see at the, at the cinema? Oh, yes. It was at the theater because I realized that I don't go to the theater as much anymore and was really upset at the people behind me, but also <laughs> realized that Friday night movies is not the same thing anymore because it used to be packed. And now when you go to the theater and someone's directly behind you, you're like, oh, my gosh, why are they right behind me making noise? <laughs> but I went to the movies and we saw A Quiet Place Day One. Oh. So the John Krasinski... It's kind of the prequel to the A Quiet Place. The I guess he did two of them before, and I I enjoyed it. It was very entertaining. I mean, it's it's not there's nothing shocking about it. Like you're not going to be surprised. Like, oh, they hear sound or they, you know what to expect. But it was just like when they arrive on the planet and when they start taking over. And really good. Really I recommend it completely. So I've been seeing ads for this all over the tube uh, in London, and there's there's this scene they keep playing over and over again here. I don't know if it was the same ad in in the U.S. where it's like they're in this glass building and the aliens sort of come through the glass, and it looks very action packed. Is it really action packed? Because that's not what I think of a quiet place movie being. I think of it being very quiet. It's interesting that you say that because we, my wife and I, were talking about this. The movie is, I would say. 80% on the emotion of like it going through and the characters. So I'm, I'm looking this up because I'm, I'm so bad with names, but the actress that is in it, and I will butcher her name, but you know, of course it's not popping up. Oh, Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, I love her. Okay, yeah. so she's like the main character, like uh, the, the person that they're kind of following through. Um, she, you know it's very emotional and like they, they they go through the emotions like a quiet place does but there was way more action than in the other quiet place so when the when the monsters are there it is an intense action movie Ooh. it was one that if i was 10 years younger i might want to see in those new 4dx theaters that like jostle you around and blow smoke at you and all because there was enough action where you're like this is intense but there it also but it's a very very much a the swings the doors both ways like it's so much action and then it's just quiet so it causes it, you know makes that like your adrenaline's up and then all of a sudden it's like down and then when it so when the action does come like you're jolted into the action of the movie so they did a good job with that part i thought that sounds good. It reminds me, or what you're describing, reminds me a bit of uh, like 28 Days Later, where there's like the intense zombie chase scenes, and then there's like them hanging. Is it Very a bit like so. that? Uh -huh. Very much so. Where it's like super quiet. It's super just. You're you're like you. It's the the feeling of what the characters are going through, and then it's just like holy crap. Like it's just <laughs> that is just it's and there's no rhyme or reason. And you know it's going to be that way, but they just do a really good job of it. And to develop characters in a movie that way where it's a completely different character set, right? Like the least, the you know, the other two kind of follow, you know, the same people. Um, this was completely different. And so to to be able to develop those characters in, re in a relatively short period of time, um, it's not like we had an hour worth of character development. It's like some movies do where it's like develop, 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 and then like something. It's like 15 minutes and then the movie's rolling. So... And it went by really quick. I think it's like almost two hours long. And I, when it ended, I was like, wow, that was two hours? Like that flew by. Oh, wow. See, that's a, that's a bug for Because a lot of times when something's kind of two hours or over, you're like, actually, you could have cut 15 minutes. You could have cut 10 minutes. And it still would have been good. Yeah. It sounds like this was just totally perfect times. Totally. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I, I thought it could have actually been, they could have made it longer. But the thing is, is there's no... <laughs> There's no gotchas. There's no, like so many times now movies are like, you're waiting for that shoe to drop or like, you don't know what was happening. Um, this is like, I know what's going to happen the entire movie. And then they just deliver. Nice. And there was like no down part to it. So like, I was like, that's, I think 
it could have went 30 more minutes and it wouldn't have felt long to me. The kill scenes are amazing. Like quiet place kill scenes are amazing. Nothing like super, it's just the quickness because it's the monster and it's like, so like all, when that happens, I'm like, sweet, yes, another one. <laughs> I mean, I always root for the monsters. I never root for like the good people. No, I mean, that's a lot of the fun of films that are built like that, where it's following lots of interesting kills. It's it's, it's the fun of those moments because otherwise you're like, oh, geez, they're killing someone again. You know, you need it to be exciting and interesting, I think. And yet another horror movie where I realized, especially in the apocalyptic horror movies, like we're like, the world is forever changed on this day. I would be dead minute two. Like, so I get to see what it would be like if I had <laughs> some kind of skill to stay alive because I would have been done. I I would have immediately been like, what's going on over here? I'm like, hey, you need help? Done, gone. Yeah, yeah, that's me. I, I always feel like I'd be that character who like turns the corner and the monster's behind them and skewers them from the back. So I didn't even get to see the monster. Oh, I was just see. there. <laughs> I'm so slow, I can't outrun them. So I might as well run towards them. At least I'll get to see it uh, before I'm over. <laughs> But see, you then get to be like the cool, brave guy who's like sacrificed yourself, but like you run, I'll be the distraction. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? It would probably just, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to come back from that. Yes, I, I will pretend that that, that would be awesome. what I'm doing. Yeah. I'd really be like crying and crapping my pants at the same <laughs> time, but I'd be like, I'd just be running the wrong way because I'm just not smart enough to be like, oh, go down this alley. No, I just, ah, and then like die. I'm always I, I I joke around with my friends that I, I I want them when they cast me in their movies I want to die in an interesting way that's my thing I want to like die in a different way in each movie and I'm convinced none of them think this that that like can figure out where best to put this but I'm convinced the most honest way for me to die would be uh, like something horrible is going to happen in this movie but what happens at the start is some totally normal girl just like trips and falls down the stairs breaks her neck nothing to do with the big terror it's just so stupid that she's died and I'm like that oh is that's crazy. so awesome. Oh, right? yes. Yes. Like, I, I, you have this movie where, like, 100 people are just getting, like, these monsters have come down from, this is not a quiet place, day one, we've gotten off the rails. <laughs> but, you know, like, there's 100 people dying, these aliens came down, they're killing, and the person over here, like, is sitting here watching it in shock and, like, accidentally trips in, like, the subway steps and, like, tumbles down and dies. Exactly. So you didn't even need to die by what's happening. <laughs> Unrelated <were>, casualty. <laughs> You want to be what do they call what do the kids call it NPCs like oh non playable character. You want to die as a non playable character. You want to just be like to the side. That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know you're starting to write movies. You can write yourself into like how Stan Lee's and all the Marvel movies. You can write yourself a small little part into all the movies that you're writing, and you just die a separate way. So future viewers of our horror movies, when you see me like girl who accidentally, you know, steps backwards out of traffic and gets hit by a bus, that's me in the movie where it's giant tentacle creatures killing everyone else. <laughs> see, and let's face it, if there was aliens that are coming down to Earth and people are dying, like, especially in America, like, we've got a lot of, I mean, I'm, I'm, overweight like the heart attack fatality rate has got to be <laughs> high in those situations people are going to be shocked their hearts are going to like explode like maybe i can just do that you just be like sitting there watching like, oh my god done nice and nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love that like monster shows not that i'm attack. joking about heart attacks by any means but <laughs> the world in which we're excited to watch horrible monsters brutally kill people so i feel yeah. like heart attacks pretty cool <laughs> that's pretty tame really yeah right, exactly uh okay so what have you been watching i was so so on the totally not tame uh, I I just watched and it, it's out now on DVD so it's not um, I think you can stream it as well but we we got it on DVD uh is immaculate and it's really really cool it's a as you might be able to guess from the title it's a religious horror it's christian horror i find religious horror fascinating but i think even if you didn't this is a really great horror movie because the concept is there's a, a novice nun i know there's another name for that but i just novice is the one that i know she's going to go get her official sort of ceremony at this beautiful italian nunnery she goes there and 
somehow she ends up pregnant without ever having had had sex without ever having done anything so immaculate conception hence the title and the way it plays out is like it starts out as it's that's weird like that is that is legitimately weird that is a it is why it's considered a miracle that just doesn't happen um <laughs> there you go nor can it nor can it but okay <laughs> just just to but so like you're in i loved that you start out even before anything weird is happening and and everything gets kind of funny people start treating her strangely weird stuff starts happening people start to die and so it goes off the rails in a very cool way as well but even before anyone's acting strange that's creepy and the movie captures that even to catholics who believe in this who are excited about it it's creepy other nuns are like what is going on it that's quite cool to me and then it 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 grows into turning out that this is something that that spoiler alert i apologize this isn't going to ruin any of the major moments for you but it turns out this is something they were trying the nunnery was trying to do uh that is that is not a huge spoiler i imagine you could have guessed it if you've seen the first few minutes of the film but it it's that then gets you this great everything you hope for in the sort of creepy religious cult movie but in a catholic church and and i thought the film was really really good not just because it has this really cool really weird idea that it then follows through really well but it it keeps getting worse and worse as the movie goes on even right to the end it doesn't cop out by the ending even i know you've seen it even the last scene you're like ah And that's great. I couldn't believe it because so many films lately haven't had that. Now, I know you've seen it. What did you think? And did I leave anything important out? No, I I really enjoyed it. I think we might have talked about it briefly a while back, just, you know, off, not on the pod, but just like in, hey, this is one that you want to check out. But yeah, no, I thought... This, it's the same way, like it, so many times you're, we get let down by the ending of the movies and I thought this just kept steaming through. It had a very concise way of like, I want to tell this story from here to here and it followed it through the whole thing. Like there was no down spots. I also like religious horror because it's just, there's so much unknown in religion in general. Like there's a lot known in religion, but there's just so many mythologies and and just, different different things about it so like you can always give it a little twist and be there but also is nunnery the correct word because i use it all the time well (laughs) i'm describing places that nuns live and like we were watching the first omen or whatever the newest one that came out and while i wasn't a huge fan of that movie but i was like oh she's going to a nunnery but i don't remember them calling it a nunnery is that is that the correct terminal like terminology for this I think they're technically called cloisters i think it's monastery and cloister but i think everyone of says, nuns i know <laughs> uh, apologies viewers while I, Google this. <laughs> I think that's right though i think it's a cloister of nuns. Oh, wow. uh, nunnery. i like nunnery better i mean i think nunnery is a legitimate um term because i know they um get thee to a nunnery is like this famous quote from okay. uh, from Hamlet, he tells his girlfriend that she shouldn't be with him, and he says, "Get thee to a nunnery, like you know, just just abandon hope and love and relationships." So nunnery is a legitimate word. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. Convent. Okay, I've heard convent. convent. I've heard convent. <laughs> I don't think viewers of the world, let me know. Cloister's a thing, right? I mean, I that's coming from now, but convent. Convent is apparently what Google I don't know what decided. a cloister. I've heard cloister. I've heard the word cloister as well. I have no idea what it means. My SAT verbal scores were not that high that I know what a cloister of anything is. So They were high enough I've... that I should. <laughs> I this is proof. Your but SATs mean nothing 20 years mean later. Mean nothing. No. <laughs> Co- covenant is, I have, or a co- covenant, not covenant. Convent. Covenant. Convent. I knew that word too. Uh, see, we live in the You can go all so many ways. Coven is witches. Convent is nuns. They're so close. Yeah, I, Immaculate, I thought was really, really well done. And I think the great thing about that, it's one of those horror movies where it does show you some horrific stuff, but it also doesn't show you a lot. 
and I I think right. that's awesome. There are some amazing scenes where you, you you see a woman drown, like try and drown another woman, which is a really horrific thing to watch. But then some things happen off screen, and you're not entirely your your brain fills it in. And I like that balance. I think too often you just get one or the other. The film is dedicated to not showing you and your imagination, or the film is dedicated to making sure you see every single second of this amputation that's totally unnecessary. Right. And I think this balance is quite cool. I wish more more horror movies did a bit of both, because why not? Why not play with both? I think it's interesting, because I think you could probably get, be more scared or trigger that part of your brain if you have to come up with it. Mm. Because I can sit and watch a movie with everyone in my family, and we all are going to have different levels of what is scary or grotesque or what's going to cause you to kind of tremble with like that, that fear part when you're watching something like that. But if you have to think about it, you're all going to get to the same level. Yeah. Without it being like me watching, you know, someone get the amputated leg and be like, oh, that's cool how they did the blood there. And then someone else is like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. But if you're thinking about something, if they let, let your mind, you know, be part of it, that's, that's great. Yeah. Well, and I think if those things stick with you longer, because you're right, like you watch, you, you watch, I saw The Ruins again recently because I'm doing it for, for research for a book. Uh, and they, that's why amputation happened. They amputate this guy's legs. And you watch it and it's horrible. You're, Ugh. But then you've seen it and it's done. Whereas like if, you know, there's something following somebody that you can't see throughout the whole movie, you're like, what the hell was it? And it keeps, you know, you think about it again later and you're like, what would it have been? What could do that? And it stays with you because your brain is still having to figure out what the answer is. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Now we're talking about it. Unlike the mo another movie that I watched, Prom Night with Jamie Lee Curtis, like 1980, like an older movie, decided to turn that on and like, typical 80s slasher but man i just that's a popcorn movie to me like those 80s slasher flicks it's great what and even oh go ahead no no go for it and even better is like i've never seen this movie and i hit play and i'm sitting down i got my popcorn and i'm and then i realized that the movie if you haven't seen it like I've, you probably have seen it because this is how i felt there's these kids chasing this girl through this abandoned hospital or school or whatever. And they're saying, you know, murder, murder. And they're chasing, I'm like, I've seen this movie. I was probably seven, <laughs> but I'm like, I've seen this movie before, but I didn't remember the grand scheme of it. But yeah, like I, I watched that, but that's like, the, just the typical slasher. Like there is nothing hidden in the imagination. Like you're going to see everything that they want you to see. Here it is. But prom night like go revisit and watch it like sometimes it's fun to go back and watch movies that like you know yeah. from the 80s where like i might have seen it i might not have but One check it out i love about that as well is like you said you it's jamie lee curtis and of course we yep. all know and love jamie lee curtis now she's a super famous scream queen she's had this incredible career but it's early jamie lee curtis so you get to see like and and you said this beforehand so i'm stealing this from you but you get to see oh yeah that's why you became this really famous you could do this kind of film and yep. blow up and be fantastic and and she's just amazing in it 100 percent. she is she is acting in like a slasher film where other people are acting as like actors i don't i don't i'm saying this i'm saying the same thing but like, you could tell that she can do her, she has more range. Like she's just a very good actress. So it was, it, I, I, she didn't just scream and die. You know, like it, it's, it's, there's more to it than that. So yeah, no, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And also little, I was pleasantly surprised to see that uh, Leslie Nielsen from uh, Naked Gun movies and Police Squad and just, so many slapstick comedies is plays a serious role in this movie so that was funny yeah that's true i could you know you forget that he's in these horror movies because he's in creep show as well and he's yep. he plays like a, a, it's a kind of funny-ish ending in that one but he plays a straight character in it he's creepy mm -hmm. in it, and it's it's quite cool to see those moments where you're not expecting somebody to behave that way in horror and we were talking as well about like seeing people's early careers in horror okay, Jamie Lee Curtis made a huge career out of horror, but even people who go outside of horror, like you, you've mentioned before, Larry the White Worm with Hugh Grant, and it's like weird mm -hmm. seeing him as this horror guy 
Leslie Nielsen is another one. I because we just achieved show Ted Danson. Ted Danson in a horror is such a oh, weird yeah. thing to see. <laughs> Ted Danson was the he gets buried on the sand, right? In creep show, or am I thinking of a completely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One? That's the one where yeah, they yeah. get buried like up to their neck and the yep. water's coming in. Horrible way to die. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the I can't decide which is worse. The 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 experience of it or the fact that he also had to see his partner dying the same way Mm -hmm. because it's the video of it sorry if anyone hasn't seen creep show that shouldn't be a spoiler it's super famous and it's from the 80s (laughs) Um, but but yeah it's like it's so it's kind of mental torture in so many different ways you're seeing someone you love and then you're also having to experience it yourself it's just yeah that was such a clever written nightmare yeah, no, it's it. That's interesting you say it because it's always fun to go back to like the '80s horror movies to, for me, and then you all are picking out people that you see. So with like Ted Danson, Leslie, but Leslie Nielsen, but also there's in it was in Creep Show. But do you remember there was the one with the uh, tobacco store Indian? Oh yeah, they, like, yeah, that's Creep them. Show too. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mess this up because I'm torn between two actors, but one of the the guys who comes in to rob the store is in a really good show called Mindhunter on Netflix, where they try like the kind of the true story of tracking serial killers at the FBI. Um, you know the people that like do the the profiles on serial killers and like profiling. And like, there's a show called Mindhunter, and he's in that, but he's also in other movies too. Where it's like he might, I don't know his name, but I've I've seen him in really good things. And I'm like, oh, he's also the the guy who robs the, you know, beats up that man and robs the tobacco store. So it's fun <laughs> to watch the 80s movies where these people are getting their starts. Yeah, definitely. Actually, because you were, I, I, I apologize. I, I was looking it up uh, online because I couldn't remember the name that I saw the other day. There was another, it was another 80s movie, 81. And I was wondering if you'd seen it because it has, um... It's got like a kind of weird mixed cast where some people you you recognize like it's got John Crawford and it's got Rebecca Balding in it who are like they, their faces you'd recognize because they're in TV a lot but they're not necessarily huge famous people. Um, right. But the film is called and I hope I pronounced this right the the Boogans. <laughs> that sounds crazy. The Boogans. Uh, I don't so think I've seen that. B o o g e n s. And I, I kind of thought of you anyway for it because they're in a mine in Colorado and and we we lived oh. in Colorado for viewers who don't we know did. that. Um, obviously not in, like, we're Denver, so not really mining country. But um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's this very 80s monster movie and this, <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for anybody. You don't see the boogin for most of it, but it's it's like this weird octopus turtle. <laughs> It's awesome in like the worst way. It really is. The old octopus turtle of Colorado. I don't remember even hearing the uh, you know the urban legend about that one, but maybe. it's very maybe. entertaining. Like if you if you go in going, okay, this has obviously not become a horror movie classic. It's got some people whose faces I'd recognize. It's from the eighties. Why not? It's very watchable. All the stuff you hope happens, happens. Like everybody gets picked off one by one. You don't see the monster straight away. So you just see like terrible stuff happen. It's it's honestly, it deserves, I, I think it deserves to be up there with a lot of the other weird 80s. Cause we have, that's, you know, that's okay. the time of critters and like, yeah, it's up there with the, with the, the turtle creature though. I will board you. It, and maybe I'm just weird. His face is kind of adorable. Like he he looks kind of sweet. So so it's probably good that they don't show you because he's got these like this big like anime cartoon eyes and he's got this little and he's just like and he's just, I don't know. I thought he was cute. <laughs> so it's kind of like you know they make monsters sometimes like that. Stranger Things didn't didn't the one kid in Stranger Things keep one of the the monsters as a pet or something like that like. They try to make monsters cute, but they're still monsters. But I, I will watch the Boogans, Gremlins. But see, they were cute until you fed them after midnight, got them wet, or exposed them to okay. light. No, I don't remember. They don't it like light. I don't. Remember. It's been a while. Yeah, no, the but one yes, I you're right. Is food and 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 getting them wet. I don't remember what the other one is, but yeah. Maybe so, they just yes, didn't like light. Them. I don't know. 
<laughs> the Boogans. Okay, I will. You know, I did watch, and I and I know we're just like kind of ramp. This is great because we get to just chat about things we've watched. Is Video Shop Tales of Terror? Yes, it is, it's finally yes. in the states. Okay, it is in the states. It is on Tubi in the states. Which, if you like horror movies, Tubi is free. I suggest getting it. You do have ads, but it's totally worth the app. Um, yeah, so I finally saw, we've interviewed so many people from this, um, from the making of this movie and I enjoyed it. It was, it was, there was a lot to take in. Um, there's a lot going on in this movie. Uh, but yeah, like I, I definitely really, uh, I believe it was Cy. We, we interviewed Cy and, and Hent, Hent, Hentley Henty. and, uh, Henty, uh, Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so his story, uh, that one was, I think, was my favorite. But the best part of that entire movie to me was just the coming attractions. Oh, God, of yeah. Different movies that are that are coming out. So if you have Tubi and you have, you know, the time, I, I give, it a, give it a watch and see what you think. And if you listen to this podcast, definitely give it a watch because we've interviewed, I think, somebody in every <laughs> piece of that movie yeah and now i'm looking forward to part two yes part two we're we're actually filming part of part two next month august uh so two our two months it's almost july uh we're filming part of it in august and it's it's gonna be so much fun. i got to write a segment for that and it it's so much fun but like you're right we've anybody so the the segment with cy hensi in it danny thomas is in thompson sorry is in that one as well and Tom Lee Rudder directed it. So that's like a London Horror Movie Club trio. Alex yes. Peterson Churchyard did the wraparound and like did several segments in that. And uh, Tony McPartner, who was our very first interview, um, he's in it as Mr. Daniels, which is- <laughs> <laughs> It's Mr. Daniels. <laughs> if you have not seen this, if you watch this show and you never met my partner or me, please watch this just for the Mr. Daniels bit. And then take pity on the fact that this man has to meet my brother having played this very, so iconic it's now in three movies, but very weird role. <laughs> I, I came to the conclusion a long time ago that no one in this household will see anything that he is in until after <laughs> they meet him. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing, he's very good at his job. He is awesome yeah. oh, at yeah. acting. And oh, so yeah. he plays these really it's not even just dis- it's disturbing but not like like ugh, disturb- like it's yeah. like oh god oh i don't want to sit next to that guy on the bus kind of thing 100 percent. oh you got it you knocked it nail okay. on the head oh it was so great like I, I i sent you a clip like i was watching it and i like i sent you i took a picture of it i was like um mr okay. daniels is coming to my house <laughs> <laughs> you know i was like wait a minute <laughs> exactly it's no awesome. it was so great so great but yeah no i i recommend the movie for sure i you know like it it there's definitely parts that i like more than other parts and like that's every movie and and but i thought it was great and like i i'm looking forward to part uh part two cannot it, wait it's gonna be a lot of fun and i and like you said it's an anthology for anybody who hasn't heard us talk mm-hmm. about it yet with anybody it's an anthology so like you said there are parts that some people will like you, everyone has their favorite in an anthology even mm-hmm. like creep show we were talking about so there'll be ones that you like get really attached to but i think unlike nest quite a lot of other anthologies not all the wraparound that holds the anthology together i think is one of the best bits which you so don't good. usually get in an anthology it's usually the wraparound and you're like okay yeah like fine we're at someone's store and they're buying an antique and whatever that's fine and you want you're waiting for the stories i love the wraparounds because like you said they have the like the coming attractions and weird yep. ads for like hot dogs and like and it's so funny oh talk about something that like stuck with me like I, we were talking earlier when you said the amputee you're like oh like i don't need to feel that i don't know if i could eat a hot dog again if you like that just I, there was nothing there was nothing over I, it was over the top and it was nothing like grotesque about it that you would think he's just eating a hot dog but i was grotesque i was grossed out by watching it you know this guy eating a hot dog in the store no it's so and good I, it was great. It just was like, I was like, oh, this is awful. <laughs> like, but it was just awful to watch. Like, he did a good 
It's like, oh. it amazing. Well, and the guy, the guy who did it, uh, Lawrence Harvey, he's in Human Centipede too. For anybody who has seen yes. that film, and so he's got like such a distinct look, and he he gets like these expressions on his face, and you're just like, oh, and you can see why was, these actors are so famous because it's like, <laughs> yes. Oh no, it's just uh, yeah. So yeah, I watch it. Uh, you know what? You just just watch it. I recommend you can see it anywhere now. Like it's. You got yeah. Tubi. You can watch it, especially in the states. It's, yeah. I, I so I got to see that. And I was excited. Really, I was more excited to see it because we had talked with so many people about it, and I haven't had a really a, a good way to to watch it yet. So, be when it came out, like the, I saw the the note from somebody, one of the one of the people on Facebook, and so I saw it. I was like, oh, I'm watching that tonight. You know, and I think you had told me too as well. It's like it's on Tubi now, and so I'm like, okay, definitely like carve out time for that so <laughs> great and definitely like you said the wraparounds like just the coming soons was great yeah it's awesome and like you said i'm excited for video chef to come out we'll have to do a um when it does we'll have to get like several of the cast members all together and do a multi and because it's oh that'd be good yeah so much yeah fun. and actually just i not think the you hot might dog get guy. to see it on horror on C. So if you're oh, okay. to Horror on Sea, we can yes, do like a- that is my plan. plan. Horror on Sea in January next year. It's awesome. So. It's going to be great. Cool. All right. I think we've done some pretty good ones. Anybody who's been listening, though, tell us other movies you you liked or that you hated that you'd love to know what we thought about. We're very happy to hop on and say stuff. Yeah. Uh, we've got our next uh, interview that's coming out in, in July. It's going to be... Um, uh, sorry, Darren Ward. Why did I blank on your last name, Darren? I apologize. He's a really fantastic director. He does quite a lot of like action films as well as horror stuff. He's he's the face behind Jallo films. So we've got a wonderful interview with him. He had such great stories that I warn you now the interview is twice as long as most of the rest of our interviews, but he has amazing stories. I mean, the guy with it can and has insane things about Jean-Claude Van Damme and blowing just stuff say, Jean -Claude up. Jean-Claude Van Damme's and... story is enough to get anybody to come. Like, just say, like, you gotta be there for Jean-Claude Van Damme's story. Exactly. So it'll be really great. That's gonna be, this is, I suppose, is out on the 14th of July, so we'll, that'll be out on the 28th. And then uh, coming up soon, we'll have a couple of great interviews going on. We've got people who've put together horror cons. Tony and I are going to be in North Carolina and you'll get to see the interview that we do live, well not live, in person with Chris and that. And then of course thinking ahead to October, we'll have our every single week another interview for you guys. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully we'll see you really soon and thank you. And thank you Chris for sharing with us some of the yeah. stuff you watched. No, it's great. I, I, I had a chance for a week to where I was kind of by myself and I was like, I am watching movies in like the main room of the house so that no one can tell me to turn it off. And so I, I, I went after it, but you know, maybe if you, if you listen to our pod and you don't follow us on Facebook, uh, jump on Facebook. Cause when Lauren and Tony are here, we might do a couple, you know, things there, live things there just on Facebook, not necessarily the uh, podcast, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to, you know, so it, it'll be a good time. Be a lot of fun. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.